so Bridge of Spies, watching Bridge of Spies is, it is rather like sinking into a firmly upholstered leather armchair with fabulously sewn ticking and, st you know, sturdy. You, you, the film starts and you just go, OK, that's fine. That's and I don't mean like you 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 sort of force it, but you just feel yep this this is craftsmanship. This is this is really and it's great because from the beginning you think okay I'm 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 in I'm in such good company. I know that this is going to run like a Swiss watch. And the opening sequence when we see Mark Rylance, who is this sort of this strange character, turns out to be Rudolf Abel, about whom nobody is entirely sure. You know where he comes from, what he does, is his accent British, Scot? Is he is he German? Is he Russian? There seems to be a hint of Scottish, like the real. Abel grew up in Newcastle. He's, he is perennially uncertain. And we start off with an almost sort of wordless scene in which he's followed through the streets of New York and through the streets of Brooklyn and he's seen doing some painting and then he's arrested and he's charged with being a spy. Enter Tom Hanks, who we've met um, as an insurance lawyer. And we've met him arguing the most bogus insurance case, which is that his client, my guy, don't call him my guy, don't call him my guy, he's not my guy. His client has been involved in an accident in which he appears to have run into five or six motorbikes. But he is arguing that it's one it's one accident. So no, not five or six cases, five, it's one accident. This is a terrible piece of insurance. So he's almost sort of set up as somebody who will use the law in that way. And then they go to him to say, actually, we need, we think this guy is a Russian spy. We need to have a trial and we want you to represent him. And he says, well, why on earth do you want me to represent him? He says, well, you know, you've got history. Actually, the, the, the real character, of course, was, you know, involved in uh, Nuremberg. Yeah, in the Nuremberg, Nuremberg prosecution. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, and he says, I don't want to do it. And they say, well, you have to because, you know, everyone said that you should do it. And so he decides that he will do it. And when he decides that he will do it, he decides that he will do it properly. And the next thing is he realizes that actually nobody wants him to do it properly. What they want is a show trial. He's not interested in doing show trial because in a very sort of Jimmy Stewart, Frank Capra kind of way, he is the embodiment of the you know American ideal, which is that you believe in the Constitution. If you're going to do something properly, you're going to do it properly. Here's a conversation between him and CIA agent, CIA agent Hoffman. We need to know. Don't go Boy Scout on me. We don't have a rule book here. You're Agent Hoffman, yeah? Yeah. German extraction. Yeah, so? My name's Donovan. Irish, both sides. Mother and father. I'm Irish. You're German. But what makes us both Americans? Just one thing. One, one, one. The rule book. We call it the Constitution. And we agree to the rules. And that's what makes us Americans. It's all that makes us Americans. So don't tell me there's no rule book. And don't nod at me like that, you son of a bitch. I love that scene because in a way it's a kind of perfect embodiment of the film. It was funny because, you know, some people said that there's an awful lot of people talking in rooms in this film. And yet somehow, you know, Janusz Kaminski, the cinematographer, manages to make even that profoundly cinematic. So here is the setup. It is essentially, although it looks like in many ways a kind of companion piece to catch me if you can, that kind of period, you know, uh, caper. Actually, it's closer in theme to Lincoln because it's essentially about one man and the desire to validate the Constitution and to do what's right, even when everybody around him seems to be telling him that actually that's the wrong thing to do. So he does defend Abel. He doesn't win the case, but he wins the right for Abel's life. Then we move forward to just after the construction of uh, the Berlin Wall and two Americans are lost you know, on the wrong side of the wall, effectively prisoners, and he is sent to negotiate a prisoner exchange. And at this point, his insurance sale, his insurance, uh, you know, salesmanship that we saw before about it's one accident, then becomes reversed as a weird sort of freedom mantra. In fact, there are two people, he has one person to bargain with, but he says it's one exchange. What I like about the film is, firstly, it does that classic Spielberg thing of taking, you know, an everyman. This is very Capra. It is very James Stewart. And I mean, it's not for nothing that many people have, you know, said that Tom Hanks is the is the sort of the, the latter day James Stewart in as much as he can, you know, embody that everyman quality. It's firstly that the the script is terrifically good fun. Matt Charman uh, rewritten uh, by the Coens, and I think you can see some of their sort of dry humour in the finished product. It's often it's impossible to unpick it and say who exactly did what. When we were talking to uh, Spielberg, he seemed to imply that, that a lot of the sort of the humour stuff had come from them. But it's a very it's a good yarn. It's based on a true story that 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 is not a story that I was aware of before. Some other people maybe, but it's not to do with 
you know, what actually happens in the end, even if you know how the story ends, it's not to do with plot spoilers. What it's to do with is watching how it is that Spielberg manages to manipulate all these things and to turn them into a really, really mainstream, totally enjoyable, absolutely understandable, you know, and film with, with great comic edges that is fundamentally about somebody saying the only thing that makes us American is the Constitution. And somehow managing to do that in a way that doesn't just sound like some you know, flag waving nonsense, but sounds like actually a really interesting and intriguing argument. The other thing—it's like the opposite of it's not flag waving at all. But no, it's not. But but and, and yet it kind of it, it, it's not flag waving because actually all the government institutions keep forgetting what the constitution is actually about, and the only person who remembers turns out to be an insurance salesman, which in, in which in a way is kind of the the shaggy dog element of the story. The other thing that's lovely about it is watching Mark Rylance and Tom Hanks uh, together because they are like from different planets. Steven Spielberg, in the interview with us, uh, he made that comment. He said he was talking about, you know, he's an alien, not the kind of alien that I usually make movies which about, great, which funny. was a lovely moment. But funnily enough, in their acting styles, Tom Hanks and Mark Rylance are as far apart as Elliot and E.T. And consequently the bond between them becomes all the more touching because of the worlds between them and the worlds between them are most ably expressed no pun intended but i'm quite pleased with it anyway yes, very good thank you most ably expressed by the utter difference in their acting styles you know tom hanks has this this way of you know talking that's very engaging very friendly and and you know sh mark rylance has this way of not saying anything for quite a long time and then saying would it help so it's the pauses. I mean, again, Tom Hanks did talk about this. He said it's going to be a phrase, by the way, when you see the movie that you will you will use this. Would it help? You will use this line as you're asked to do various tasks around the house. You will just say, would it help? And then you'll get a and smack. That, but what's lovely is that that become now there are moments of action. There's the spectacular plane crash. There are, you know, moments of sort of uh, Cold War thriller spy tension. Yes, all those things are going. But underneath it is this, as I said, I keep coming back to Capra. Um, it's also, it's a Cold War movie, but it's also a War of the Colds movie. It is a movie in which, you know, Mark Rylance's character has a sniffle in New York and then Tom Hanks's character has a raging head cold by the time he gets to Berlin and then he passes the head cold on, almost like a sort of microfiche. So there's almost like an underlying gag going on. Again, when we spoke to Tom Hanks, I mean, I said, Dick, that can't be much fun playing a character whose primary... Uh, his primary sort of characteristic on screen is that he's sniffling the whole time. And Hank said, well, actually, it's it's good because it gives you something to lean on. And it is inspired by a real thing. Apparently, the real James Donovan really did develop this raging cold as he went to Berlin, which stayed with him the whole time that he was there. And then you have just the sheer, the, the beauty of watching the cameras move, of watching the editing, of watching, you know, a film that's put together by somebody who just understands how it is that you engage a mainstream audience, that you catch their attention, that you, you know, you, you win their sympathies, and then you take them with you as the story goes hither and yon, even as it does strange things like those weird little, uh, you know, that action sequence. Also, all the way through the film, there's a kind of mirroring and doubling thing going on. You know, we, we open pretty much with, you know, there's an, there's an image of Mark Rylance's face very near the beginning of him looking at himself in the mirror. There's the whole thing about the US and, uh, and Russia. He's a good soldier for Russia in the same way that I'm a good soldier for the US. And isn't that more important? Is the most important thing that you're loyal to whoever your team is? There's, there's an event that you see as he's going across the wall that is then reflected in something which you see back in the gardens of, in the backyards of New York, all the way through this something which is actually a very, very Spielbergian thing and happens, I mean, if you go back to Elliot and E.T., that's, you know, Elliot, E.T., blah, blah, blah. This is something which he does. And it's superbly crafted, absolutely bang on, middle of the road, mainstream entertainment with something to say and, you know, saying it in a way that is entertaining and delightful. And I liked it very, very much.